In this video, we're going to dive deeper to understand the differences between the net present value method and the internal rate of return method. So the net present value method directly measures the increase in value to the firm. So remember that this is a dollar number is a dollar value. Um, in, in a perfect world, the change, um, the net present value that a firm is able to generate from a project should directly be reflected in its increase in stock price. Uh, of course, there are a lot more um, nuances in the real world when we have information asymmetry, so investors don't know all the information that managers know. But in theory, the net present value is the method that tells us exactly how much more valuable a firm will become if it undertakes the project. And um, whenever there is a conflict between the net present value and any other decision rule, remember that you should always base on the internal rate, of, uh, the net present value method. The internal rate of return is by far the most popular alternative, but it has a few shortcomings. So you want to keep in mind that if you're dealing with non-conventional cash flows, meaning that cash flow change signs more than once, um, or mutually exclusive projects, you want to pay particular close attention. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this point. Let's take a look at these two projects, project A and project B. In here, the required return for both projects is 10%. And so for this particular project, oops, we want to compute the net present value and also the internal rate of return. And we do have a conflict if you, if, if you go through the calculation. So let's do that first. So let's start with computing the net present value and the internal rate of return for project A. So let's clear our calculator. So for project A, cash flow in year zero was $500. And that's a cash outflow. So 500, enter. And cash flow in year one is $325. Go down to cash flow in year two is also $325. Go to MPV. Our discount rate, remember, is 10% for both projects. So 10% enter and we'll go down to compute the net present value net present value turns out to be sixty four dollars and five cents so that's how we come up with sixty four dollars and five cents for the net present value to compute the internal rate of return we actually can just press irr and compute since our cash flow is already all enter so compute our internal rate of return is 19.43 percent I'm going to ask you to pause the video now and do the calculation for project B. So compute the net present value and the internal rate of return for project B. Did you get 22.17% for IR and $60.74 for net present value? Congratulations. So now let's take a look at how we will use this information. So let's say you are choosing between the two projects. So very important, you cannot choose a, um, you cannot choose the net present value or you cannot choose the internal rate of return. What you can is choose a project. So the choice you're making is whether or not you want to choose project A or whether or not you want to choose project B. And you make that choice based on the decision rule that you use. So if you use the decision rule of internal rate of return, we'll choose the project that has the higher internal rate of return. So the IR method will say project B is the better project because project B has a higher IRR. Now, on the other hand, if you decided that you want to use the net present value rule, if you use this rule, you compare the two numbers and you say, well, project A has a higher net present value. So the net present value rule will say choose project A. So that's which project will you choose and why. So you choose a project and you base your decision on the rule that you use. So in this case, we have a conflict because the MPV rule says choose project A. The IRR rule says choose project B. So what should we do? 
The simple answer in the textbook said when any in doubt, always go with the net present value rule. So if you're going with the net present value rule, you will choose project A. But we may want to ask ourselves a question. Well, why is there a conflict? So in, we, we want to take a deeper look at this problem. What we, do, what we can do is we can create a, the net present value profile for both projects, both project A and project B. If you create the net present value profile, you'll see that project A has a steeper slope than project B. So in this case, it also indicates that the conflict doesn't always exist. So in our example, the required return was 10%. So at 10%, you can see that a discount rate of 10%, project B, project A and project B has different net present value. However, remember that the internal rate of return is independent of the discount rate. So project A has a internal rate of return of 19% and project B has an internal rate of return of 22.1%. So this is project, this curve is project B and this curve is project A. Notice that from this point on, project B's curve is always higher than project A's curve. So what that means is that from this point on, project B has a higher net present value than project A. So in this area, there is no conflict between the net present value and the internal rate of return method. But over in this area, the net present value of project A is higher than the net present value of project B, whereas the internal rate of return for project B is always higher than, than the internal rate of return for project A. So in this area, we have conflict between the two methods. This point here is called the crossover point, the crossover point of 11.8%. The reason why this becomes important is even though today's required return is 10%, and we cannot, we cannot choose that, nor can we change that. However, economic conditions can change. The Federal Reserve is likely going to increase interest rate. And if that happened, the required return for all projects will go up. So right now at the required return of 10%, we say we should always use net present value method and choose project A. However, if there's a good chance that the required return is going to go up, let's say in an extreme case, it may go up to 15%. If that's the case, then project B will become the better project. So in here, we're talking about uncertainty. Today, the discount rate is 10%, but what are the chances of the discount rate going up or going down? So we want to take that into account. So here we have this we know this particular point that can make an important um, difference for us, and that's the crossover point. Um, you can also compute the crossover point, and it's relatively straightforward to do. Let's take a look at our two questions, our two problems. We have project A and project B. So what we need to do is compute the difference in the cash flow. So, and then we can compute the internal rate of return of those difference. So let's take a look at the difference. In here, project A is zero, cash flow is $500, project B is $400. So project A's cash flow minus project B's cash flow is minus $100. In other words, project A costs $100 more than project B. In year one, both projects generate the same amount of cash flow, so the difference is zero. In year two, project A generates a higher cash flow than project B, the difference is $125. So to compute the crossover rate, we want to compute the internal rate of return of this cash flow. So step one is to compute the difference in the cash flow, and then step two is to compute the internal rate of return. So let's go enter this into our calculator. So let's go to cash flow and clear out the cash flow. Year zero is minus 100, so 100 change the sign to negative and then year one is zero so we just press zero year two we go down to cash flow in year two 
is $125. So 125, press enter. Now we go to IRR. Remember, we're going to compute IRR, so we press compute. That is the crossover rate. So remember, the calculator is there to help you do the calculation. The economic meaning of the number depends on your input. So in here, we're inputting the difference, the changes in cash flow. So the answer we get, the 11.8%, represents the crossover rate.